Good morning. Good morning, everyone. God bless you. This is Pastor Victoria with the ARC International Ministries uh, out of Atlanta. And uh, I pray that you are well this morning. I wanted to come live for um, just a few minutes. wanted to just share some things that uh, are on my heart, some things that I'm seeing uh, in these interesting times that we are living in. Uh, I certainly don't have all of the answers. And, you know, no one person does. <laughs> I think that's one of the kind of interesting things about this time that we live in. Uh, it is really meant for us to figure this out together. Uh, in fact, unity, a lack of unity is one of the challenges that we have as a world right now. So I hope that you'll share this broadcast uh, with those that you feel would benefit from it. And I thank you all just for joining me for a few minutes this morning. So I'm just going to share about four points, four things that I see, uh, four ways I believe that we, even as individuals, um, but especially as leadership, uh, four ways that we can affect change in what we're seeing right now. Uh, the first is that there's such a need for restoration for everyone at the heart level. The changes that are needed, I think, cannot um, fully be affected just by a law, but there's a need for a change of heart for the people. There's such a lack of compassion. There's a lack of honor and respect, general, one for another, and just a lack of kindness in our world. So I believe that's the heart change that needs to occur. And again, I don't think a law can cause that. Uh, that is through the influence of Jesus Christ on the life of another person. And guess who he has left in this earth realm to be that influence for him? It's us. Um, the second thing that I see is that there is just generally a lack of accountability one to another. Accountability is, um, I like to say, it's a report giving behavior. And it answers these three questions. It says, what am I going to do? When am I going to do it? And how will I know when it's done? And so as we think about the things that are going on with our police departments, even answers that we're looking for um, as it relates to the spread of COVID-19, that's really what we as individuals want to know. What's being done about it? When are you going to do what needs to be done? And how will I know when that thing is done? As we look at the police department, we're saying this injustice has occurred. So now what are you going to do about it? When are you going to do it? And how exactly will I know when it's done? That is what accountability is. And there's such a lack of accountability um, in our nation and in our world, just uh, uh, across the gamut nowadays. So there's work that needs to be done in that area. And listen, that's one of those areas that we also need to practice in our own lives daily. If you've not ever had anyone in your life that holds you accountable, then you won't do that for others as well. So this is a learned behavior. I don't know that it comes naturally, but it's a learned behavior and one that we need to begin to practice right at home with our own family, with our own children, with our own relationships, even our friendships, in our own marriages. We need to practice accountability. Um, when I talk about accountability, we must all be accountable to God. We must be accountable to ourselves. We must, must ask ourselves some difficult questions. We must be accountable one to another. So accountability is something that I see that's missing. Um, thirdly, we need to let our voice be heard in many ways, one of which is through our vote. Along with that, I believe there needs to be greater access and information concerning those that we're voting for. 
Often we go out to the polls and we vote a party. We could almost click an X on the box that might say everything Democratic or everything Republican, and we vote that way. But if accountability is lacking, that's not something that starts necessarily with the party as a whole, but it starts with the individual. So we need to understand and know more about those that are running for office, and we need to be able to explain to someone else why we chose to vote for them. So I would love to see more access to information about those that are running for office and that access being granted, especially to those that we might consider the least of these. Um, and I don't know, I really don't know the answer to that. I don't know, for example, all of the websites or all of the forums uh, that people need to begin paying attention to. But I can tell you this, you can vote, vote and vote all day long, but it's about more than just checking off a box. We better start knowing who we're voting for and why and looking for signs that they have um, displayed a path and a history of accountable behavior that you can count on. Um, regardless of what direction or what party you are voting for. Um, so we can't continue to do things the same way and expect a different result. You all have heard that phrase that we have said that for years, but it is true. Um, we have to now start really looking in the mirror, each and every one of us. Um, Michael Jackson wrote that in the song. Y'all remember that song, Man in the Mirror? And he said in the lyrics of that song that no message could have been any clearer that if we want change, it has to start with self. So we need to begin asking ourselves, what can I do differently? What do I need to adjust in my own life, in my own interactions with my brothers and my sisters? Regardless of race, regardless of culture, regardless of lifestyle, where can I do? Where do I need to do better with how I treat and interact with people? I also um, want to share this, is that we all have a sphere of influence. In other words, for all of us, there are people around us that will hear us, that will listen to what we say, that will um, or that find interest in what it is that we think. All of us have that sphere of influence. This is a time when you need to be engaging in constructive conversations with a goal that will lead to possible solutions, starting in that small circle and then branching out. So, you know, you or I may not be able to go downtown and we may not be able to um, speak to the masses that are in downtown Atlanta or in some other city or state, they may not hear us, but there are those around you that will hear you if you will speak. Is it your children? Is it your family? Is it the people in your church or ministry? Is it those on your job? Who will hear if you truly have something to say? And let that something that you say be rooted and grounded you know, spiritually, let it be rooted and grounded in a love for humanity and compassion and guidance. Let it be rooted and grounded in information and knowledge and wisdom, godly wisdom and wise counsel. So this is just not about opening your mouth saying anything. And it is not about how loud you're speaking. You can speak and shout and scream, but yet have nothing to say. So have something to say. Prayerfully speak up when you need to speak up. Speak to your children, your families, that sphere of influence. Speak to them about the things that are going on today. You, could, you would be surprised what solutions might come out of that. So listen, you all hang in there. Change is going to come. And it often comes on the heels of chaos. So don't let the chaos right now make you fearful. Understand that um, it is pressing this world. My God, it's not just our city. It's not just our town. It's our world. 
it is pressing and demanding a change in our world. And we all have to be a part of that. It's for no one person, for no one party. It's all of us that need to be a part of this change. So God bless you. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day. Uh, I am headed to get some work done like I know many of you all are. This again is Pastor Victoria with The Ark. Uh, I'm out of Atlanta, Georgia. And be safe today. Be kind to someone today. Amen. God bless you.